Welcome to the May edition of Corridor Conversations. I'm Lisa Walker with Hyattsville Aging in Place. And this program, Corridor Conversations, is an online series looking at the people, culture, and heritage that make Route 1 and the Route 1 corridor the creative area that it is. This program is a collaboration of the villages along Route 1, including Hyattsville Aging in Place, Helping Hands University Park, uh, Neighbors Helping Neighbors of College Park, and Explorations of Aging in College Park. We're really pleased to have support for these programs from the city of Hyattsville. It's a real treat to have Raquel join us this morning. She describes herself as a storyteller in so many forms, painting, drawing, printmaking, and assemblage. She focuses on the passage of time and its effect on memories. Her work's been exhibited widely around our area in um, Greenbelt, Silver Spring, Annapolis, Columbia, and throughout Maryland, as well as for many years in the program uh, a staff show at the Phillips Gallery in Washington, D.C. She's been an artist in residence with the city of Greenbelt from 2018 to 20, 2021, and, and at, in the Bahamas in 2021 also. She's also a returning artist in residence at a chateau in northeastern France, which I'm told is pronounced Chateau or Orcavo. She has a bachelor's in graphic design from American University and a certificate of leadership coaching from Georgetown University. And I'm gonna turn this over to Raquel. Take it away. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you for the lovely introduction. And just to clarify, the Bahamas residency got bumped because of COVID. So, oh, so I'm okay. still waiting on that delicious little trip. So oh, it's hopefully, hopefully that'll happen. Um, Last I heard, it's likely going to be 2024. So um, they they bumped it good and clear. They're like, we don't want to keep addressing this, I guess. <laughs> um, all right. So um, I am happy to be here. Uh, I thought that um, it would be fun to experiment with um, things that we can find in our house um, because pigment is pigment. And so let me... Um, should see this and I'm gonna make my view a little bit different like I think I will put it at the speaker well no I'm gonna I'm gonna pin it I'm gonna pin it so that way if anybody talks we can um, see it so can everybody see that pretty big okay yeah that's great all right awesome so um you guys can go ahead and unmute yourselves if, if you'd like, uh, because it, since I've spotlighted it, it won't affect, like we won't be flipping images and things like that. Um, so we should be good with that. Um, and then what we are going to attempt to do is move forward with our little slideshow. Hang on a sec. For some reason it is not allowing me to do that. So I'm going to, uh, minimized myself and hopefully we will take care of this in another view. So, so the screen that you see is still the, um, the three things, right? Yeah. Great. No, All right. Yeah. So, also. yes, I just switched sides because it, it's for whatever reason, it's a, not allowing me to uh, switch the image in the actual program. So we sent out, I believe, uh, a suggested materials list. Um, it can be anything, really. I don't have everything on the list. So if you don't have everything on the list, that's perfectly okay. But some suggested items were um, brewed coffee, um, tea that's been brewed. You can also save the tea bag, um, juice, uh, largely anything that has some color to it. You know, anything that stains your shirt will stain paper. Um, blackberries or blueberries, uh, cosmetics of any sort, eyeshadow, blush, mascara, nail polish, uh, water, a hair dryer if you want to speed up the drying, but I will say if you use that, I'd recommend muting yourself. Um, mm -hmm. 
We also have Q-tips, cotton balls, a straw, um, household sponge, dirt from outside. Um, and a hard stock or a heavier stock paper is preferred just because it'll allow you to abuse it a bit more. Uh, if it, you have just plain copy paper, uh, you can use that as well, but that will, you'll have to be a little bit more gentle with it and a little bit less liquid. Um, let's see what else we have. Um, anything from a yard walk uh, or just, you know, around uh, the lake that works as well. Um, and anything that you have, little bits and things that that drawer that you shove everything in, um, that can be art supplies as well. Um, Elmer's glue. Uh, and if you don't have that, you can make it with flour and water, um, which works surprisingly well. Um, if you have things that are a little bit uh, heavier, you would need, let me see, mine's still kind of, mine's have one that's in packaging, this E6000, okay, um, which works great for um, keeping heavier things in place. Um, and anything else that you just want to experiment with. Okay. So, as uh, the the program says, hunt, gather, and make. You can make art out of anything. So, um, I'll say right smack in the middle of of all of our uh, pandemic woes. Uh, I convinced my husband to go on a little trip to this uh, house that sits on a river in the middle of a farm, right in Eastern Shore, and. So I would walk around the property and think, so this is my version of corn hinge. Um, <laughs> and I was like, I'm really happy I'm in the middle of nowhere because no one can see me laying on the ground building things with leftover corn. Um, but it, it made me laugh. And so I did it. And, uh, and then the next day, unfortunately, the geese that were around, uh, they, they toppled it like Godzilla. Um, and this is a piece that I made while I was there of things that were just on hand. Um, I, I think the only man-made things that I have were the black ink and the red. Um, I tore a piece of cardboard off of uh, a box, you know, the little flip, uh, the, the lids. And so I just tore a panel off of that and seed pods, corn husks, et cetera. And I made my glue from flour and water. And, and this was made like two years ago and it is still holding together. So, cool. and then this is again, same thing. This is all, I just decided to keep everything um, with the little farm trip that we did. So this is an old cigar box. Um, this is some of the wheat that I found there. Um, it turns out, you know, that um, Harriet Tubman uh, was uh, lived in the area for a very long time. Um, and so this piece of wood I had had a little uh, bug track in it that I thought uh, was beautiful. And so I highlighted that to be sort of the river that runs through everything. And the little houses uh, were uh, indicative of um, her uh, 13 trips. Uh, to uh, take people to freedom. So. All right. So I'm just this. So my my tagline for this, I'm going to steal it. Is it's so easy a caveman can do it. Okay. <laughs> so all of these things that we have um, are very easy to use. Um, and so think about cavemen, all natural materials, pigment. Um, these are different caves applied in different ways, so but all using their, their hands. And so um, they're basically putting their hand up on the wall and then spitting color around it. So um, I know uh, that like if you have that green hairspray, you could do something like that. Mm -hmm. um, these are mark making, so just dots and lines and patterns. Cool. Okay, and then this is just a drawing. So this is literally stuff that you have outside your, your door that you could use to, um, to make art. Uh, the only thing that's different about it, um, obviously these caves are the perfect place that they've lasted 
thousands of years. So um, <laughs> they didn't have hairspray to seal it. But since ours uh, is, isn't going to necessarily be in this perfect atmosphere, you might want to seal it with um, an aerosol hairspray. So not the kind that's real wet, but the kind that you, um, you know, you think the aqua, aquanet, like so the big haze. Um, but that'll help fix um, the charcoal and, and the such so that it doesn't smudge. All right. So we are going to experiment a little bit. I'm going to do a few little um, demos uh, so that you guys can see what I'm talking about with um, supplies. Okay. And if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. I'm happy to answer anything. This is just uh, watercolor paper that I have. And also I have a tendency to slide my work down here towards me. Um, so if, if it starts to slide out of view, please, please don't hesitate to let me know. Because um, what happens is it's just habit and I like to work really close. And so it just, I just drag it across myself. Um, all right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, so this, this, this little dish, I tried to make it look like uh, one of those food shows. Like, <laughs> so this is just charcoal from uh, the fire pit, okay? So just the, where your logs burn up and this is left behind. Um, and so you can use this to, to draw and you can smudge it with your finger, <laughs> okay? So, so it's a very easy thing to, to draw with. Now, if you take this and you make a little square and you use honey. So a lot of art supplies are, uh, I like honey, so it's a big bottle. Um, a lot of art supplies are bound uh, with some sort of binding material. A lot of watercolors will have um, honey in them. And so for me, I will... I'm going to put a little bit of it in a dish here just because it'll be easier. And you don't need a whole lot, which is nice. It'll, it'll do its thing um, pretty readily. You can just, I'm going to just use a Q-tip for it. So see there. And you can rub this into your charcoal. And that's going to give it a very different kind of look than the just dried charcoal. Um, if you wanna make it even darker, so that I added the honey after, right? But if I want to make something and add the honey, I'm just gonna use my finger because it's gonna get dirty anyway. But you come back in and you cover that honey with your charcoal you can get a really nice dark going. You see how dark that is by comparison? Okay. And that's just simple, just stuff out of your fire pit. That, that's stuff out of my fire pit. And I can come in here and blend it a little bit more. Um, once it has a little bit of a time to dry, I can then um, seal it with a hairspray to keep it from kind of squiggling around. But yeah, that's a really nice black there. Can you see it? Okay, so there's that one. And hang on, I'm gonna wipe my fingers off because I probably should have done the honey last. <laughs> um, so the other would be, um, all right, so I have some, this is creamy eyeshadow. Okay, so if I take that and I put it on my paper, I can still kind of move this around like um, like an oil pastel or, or the such. And I might have a little bit of charcoal in there because I didn't religiously clean my fingers. I'm putting two dots here just so that you guys can see what happens when you add things to it. And this is lipstick. This is a creamy lipstick. This is like a cover girl. Okay. 
And so I can put that out there. And that's got a really nice, rich color. And I can blend with my finger, just like I would blend a pastel. And, but that's, this one actually feels really good. This feels like a high-end pastel. Um, but then again, I can take a, a Q-tip with <laughs> And I can put it in there, and that will start to alter the way that looks a little bit. See how that sort of flattens that shine? Can you guys see that? Oop, hang on, I guess find the. Okay, so you can do that. You can also use this is olive oil, just a jar of olive oil. So you can just dip that in there. I would not use so much, like so that, you know, your Q-tip um, really sucks it up. I would just use a little bit. So I, I dried off the excess with the paper towel, but you can get it to blend really quite nicely just with that oil. That oil will break that down, okay? So that, there's a, so that you guys are gonna get to play with all of these things and ask questions um, when, we, when we get going. All right, so the next thing I wanted to show you is, I'll do it on the back of this one. Yeah, so you'll see, you're gonna know what that is in just a minute. So I have this blue nail polish that actually um, paints surprisingly well. It, uh, it's kind of fun to use. And it dries pretty quickly. And I'm just using the brush that's in my little paint or finger painting. And then this is old English, okay? Because I'm like, oh, I need a brown, right? Um, and I'm going to try to do this with a, because I am going to end up squirting this all over myself, and that would um, be part of the course. But so I'm just going to stick my um, little Q tip in there, and then I can come in here and add a bit of brown over that blue. And so you see how that will alter the color. Can you see how it turns it almost, makes it a little bit almost like a greenish kind of blue. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can come in and make, you know, little clouds or whatever with that. All right. So, and that was just something that I uh, picked up when I was out here. I was like, what else do I have in my studio? And I was like, oh, I have Old English. Um, I will say it smells a little bit, the nail polish and the Old English. So um, open a window. Um, and then I have two more that I want to show you, which is one is tremendous fun, um, but my old law firm experience uh, tells me to tell you guys, uh, please be, please be careful, please, please don't set yourself on fire. <laughs> so this is an old birthday candle and my little lighter thing. All right, and so you can draw on your paper. You're gonna see I'm using an old painting. So what will happen? I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show this in progress, but I will be able to show you after. What you can do is you can use the smoke to draw on the surface of the paper. And you wanna keep it moving so that you don't really, um, set things on fire. Um, got a little wax on there. So can you see? Mm -hmm. Isn't it beautiful? Mm -hmm. And you can, very cool. Yeah, and, and what you can do is you want to get it a little bit darker, you just go over those same areas. And, and obviously, it's going to be a bit more organic. Um, but you see how mm -hmm. it's just lovely. 
Um, and so, you know, I tend to get a lot of candles for Christmas. And, um, and so it's always good. You know, you have an endless supply to make things with. Okay. Um, and then my last thing, I'll just do it on the little slip thing. Since you can see there's a little bit of wax there. So you got to watch out for your dripping wax. I would say do it over a dish if you if you want. So let's say we're going to make this into somebody's face, right? Okay. And so if I want to accentuate these, I can come in here with my marker. Okay. We'll give them an earring. All right. And then what you can do with this is a paper mate pen, uh, which I have found uh, works pretty well to do this. If you want something to be darker, you're, you want to you want to um, make it dark before you add any water to it. Um, because what will happen is uh, you, you won't be able to get the same kind of effect. But you can come in with just some clean water. And that will just sort of break it apart. You know, like this is where all that burn is, like from the smoke. And so you can see it's picking up a little bit of grit in there. Okay. But you can just stretch this all out. Okay. Okay, you see how that works with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> so you can just have some fun with it. All right. So those were the, the major things that I wanted to show you guys. Uh, does anybody have any questions? So, uh, just a question. The paper you're using, I know you said you could use any sort of uh, copy paper or whatever, but mm -hmm. I mean, that looks uh, like it's got a heavier texture or grain. Does that Help yes. So this this is canvas paper, which I don't particularly like to paint on. So these are some old things that I did, like uh, out like plain air painting that I didn't particularly care for. So I'm just using the back side of it because it's a heavier paper. Um, but then this is a watercolor paper that has a little bit more flex. But a cardstock uh, will work just as well. Um, you could uh, use index cards if you want to do things small. Like that has a nice little weight to it. Now they, they may not have, um, they not, may not be acid free. So, so if it's something where you're like, oh, I want to explore uh, and do something a little bit more with, with what, um, maybe I want to keep it for a very long time. You're going to want to seal it uh, with uh, like a, an acrylic like gloss medium or something okay but yeah so it'll it'll affect papers will affect the way things look and how they run and like obviously like this this um smoke on here affected how this would run as well you know and so it's almost like the surface is like uh, oh, you burnt me. I'm, I'm not going to be as receptive. So, um, yeah, so, so it'll all have a cause and effect. Um, this is one that I did with, um, it's on watercolor paper and different like eyeliners and things. So lip liner can make my dots. So, so you can have fun. Yeah. Um, and I will show you one more thing. Just if you have mascara or the so such, this is, uh, a mascara painting, just using the mascara wand. Okay, so um, if anybody is like me and they buy mascaras and never use them, <laughs> there is a purpose for them. 
<laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Let's see. Let me just. So what we're going to do uh, first is uh, loosen up a little bit. So do you guys all have your supplies? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Just get one piece of paper. It can be one large piece of paper. It can be, because this is just to loosen up. This is like stretching before you um, go for a run or something. What I'm going to do in the meet, while I'm figuring out the music, I'm going to set a timer for you all. Um, and what I want you to do is take three minutes and just, have fun. Don't worry about what you're making. Just uh, go ahead and get started. I'm going to put the timer on. Give me one second. All right. You guys ready? Sure. All right. Go. I need a bigger table. <laughs> I do. All right, there's our timer. All right, how did it go? It's fun. Yeah, is it messy? <laughs> what, what did you say? I said, is it messy? I tried, I didn't, I didn't have enough time to mess it up. Do you guys wanna show us what you uh, did? Sure. Okay. Here. Can you see let's it? See. Oh, let me um, cancel my spotlight here. Oh, remove spotlight. There we go. 
All right. Oh, very nice. Okay, great. You got some good marks down. Yeah. What are they? What is everything that you marked? Well, this is mascara. Uh huh. With water, without water. Uh huh. Lips, lipstick. Uh huh. This is coffee. Uh huh. This is a blush. <laughs> Nice. And this, and this is blackberries, and that's really pretty, but you can hardly see it, you know? I, I don't have enough dimension on it, I guess, or enough. This, this purple right in the middle. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, what you might try to do is, so next go round, <clears throat> try the blackberries. If you have honey at all, try yeah. it with, with a little bit of honey and see if that intensifies it at all. Okay. Yep. All right. Anybody else want to show us what they did? <laughs> no, no. All right. So what I'm going to do? Uh, hello, Jean. Uh, there's another Jean here. Welcome. <laughs> so right now we're experimenting with our uh, our our home products. Uh, did you bring any um, home products with you? Like, did you bring any supplies? No. <laughs> okay, well, you, that's fine. You can just uh, watch us make a mess. That's perfectly okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so this one I did was the, remember the charcoal I was showing you with the honey, right? Yeah. So what I did was, because I know that a lot of watercolor has honey as a binder, I added water to it this go round and then started going back into it with um, my old English uh -huh. to see how it interacts with it. So, um, and it, what it does is it kind of almost pushes it away, sort of like, um, you know, the, when you do the soap thing and, and I, I think it chases pepper away or something. So. All right, so now let me see. I'm going to put on, let's see if we can get you guys some music because I'm going to put it on my cell phone. So hopefully you all will be able to hear it through there. Can you hear it? Yeah. Oh, great. Perfect. All right, so let's just create for this song. It's awkward. Is it, it's awkward? What is it? Is it, how is it awkward? Kind of, it's like in and out, kind of. It's what? In and out. In and out. Well, I can move it closer to the. Maybe I'll move. It. Let me see if I can move it closer to our speakers. Is that better? Yes. Did you start us? Je te reviens 
et l'amour va fleurir. Bâtisse tes yeux de sa All right. How did that feel? Did that feel a little bit uh, better? Was it nicer to make do this to music? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you asked. Yeah, I'm telling you. No, because it doesn't. It's not. It doesn't sound smooth and like whatever it's supposed to sound like. Oh, is it? Is it? Is yeah. It, it's oh, okay. Kinda, we'll, we'll just, we won't do it. Crazy. We won't. All right. Well, yep. Yeah, for whatever reason, the the music is not. Uh, Okay. Uh, no, so guess what? We don't have to use it. <laughs> you can just you can just you can just sing, Raquel. Yeah, that's that will be good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. So, does anyone want to share what they have made with uh, this one? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cheating. I'm keeping going. That's, you know, I completely encourage cheating. Like that, like, like rules are simply designed to be broken. <laughs> so I will show you guys this. This is the one that I did, which is mascara and my pinkish nail polish here. Yeah. I'm sure that um, Color Secrets Professional would be really happy to know that that's what I'm using there their nail polish for <laughs> so but what you can do is because the um the mascara has a little bit of a thickness to it i use the tip of the wand to carve back in and make these little patterns okay so so once you lay it down so i was i just applied really thick layer of um the mascara and then carved back in just i just tipped that uh brush so that it was perpendicular to the surface and, and, and had at it, okay? So, so uh, a question for you, Bill. Yes. Um, like when, when you're you know, working, making, making art, how often are you using these sort of uh, materials as part of your medium? Or is this something you do that's sort of like just, it's the burst of creativity or is it sometimes you find like, you know, I can only really get that effect or that color if I'm blending mascara into it or something. <laughs> I will say that I tend to do this more when I feel like just kind of playing. You know what I mean? Like, so, so sometimes like as a creative, I want to be creative, but I don't want the pressure of being creative, you know? And so I'm like, oh, well, if I'm playing with dirt or I'm playing with mascara, then, and then you kind of get, it becomes a more experimental, which is for me, great fun to, to see what different things can do. Um, and then that kind of feeds that creativity. And then, then what I might do down the road is take something um, and, and apply it to, I'll say real work. Do you know? So, um, but there are people who uh, do this and um, like, I, let me see if I can find, uh, I put something on the little slideshow. Um, let me just show you it real quick if I can unearth it. So, well, actually, so this one that with the let loosen up, that is all dirt and charcoal from a fire pit. So that's dirt from the yard and uh, charcoal from the fire pit. Um, mm -hmm. This is somebody who is a makeup artist and all she does is uh, make art with the expired lipstick. You know, and, and, and look how great it looks in this, the frames. Like, it just looks great. Yeah. You know? and it, yeah it, and so, so I think that, um, like I say, pigment's pigment. And so, you know, I think that, you know, uh, what is it? Necessity is the mother of invention, right? And so, um, and you hate to throw stuff out, you know? So it's, it's so if, if you find yourself with an abundance of products before, 
before getting rid of them, whether it's makeup or old English or those kinds of things, you know, maybe play with them a little bit and say, is there something that I can do with these? Um, like they might not be good for what the original uh, thing was that was intended, but, but they can be expanded upon. Okay. What do you, what do you apply to the oil to make it dry faster or the things that are oil, the products that are oily or, or greasy? Uh, you, you mean like the, the, the creamy, like the lipstick yeah. and stuff? All right, so I think she just lets hers just dry because it's still got that rich vibrancy to it, and she applies hers with a palette knife, okay? Um, and so I think she just allows it to dry over time. Um, if you take, like, the olive oil or a canola oil or something like that, you will, you'll lose a little bit of the richness, but um, it will dry a bit faster. So it's like whenever you have that, that thick, uh, that any, even with oil paints that are designed to be paints, uh, the thicker it is, the longer it takes to dry, you know? So, so I would say if you want it to dry quicker, add a little bit of, um, like canola or olive oil <laughs> and thin layers. And then you can build up those layers. So once it's dried, you can uh, uh, add a little bit more. Okay. Uh, just another sort of question about process and intentionality with some of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you give much consideration thinking like how things blend or is it more like finding the accidents and, and learning what works? I mean, just thinking you put the water with the old English, which is a shoe polish, which would be hydrophobic. And so it created that kind of effect yeah. is that sort of like oh my gosh that happened or like I know I'm gonna get this if I do that is it just something you I will say it... so so sometimes sometimes it's oh I know this is gonna happen um I figure with anything that has like an alcohol base in it that it's gonna chase the color because there's a technique in watercolor that you can basically draw in your painting as long as it's still wet uh, using alcohol. Uh, you can, you can do a spatter with it and that type of thing. And so with the old English, it was just more along the lines of, I have it here in a, in a, a dish and I just want to see what happens, you know, there. And so it was actually a really pleasant surprise. I mean, I, I actually really liked how it, uh, drew back into it. And I, and I like how, um, the old English on the paper seems to be much fainter than what I think of it when I apply it to my furniture. And, uh, Cause this is, this is the uh, dark wood, you know? And so I would think it would be dark like it is in my dish, but when you go to apply it, it's, it's much lighter. And so it's really just about experimenting with your materials and seeing what you like, what you'd keep, what you'd jettison. Um, would I do this again? Yeah, probably. Because it's, it's just kind of fun to do. Um, does that answer? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Sure, of course. Does anybody else have any questions? I think Jean Washburn, you, uh, you're muted. There we go. Um, so when you're, when you're working with dirt or blueberries or the mask or anything, after you've created what you like, do you put a fixative on it? I mean, is it like the dirt, would it fall off, you know? Yeah, so you, it depends on how you use it, whether it would fall off or not. Obviously, if it was dry, like, so I have, this is, this is dirt right here. And so if I apply that, I'm going to get a really kind of soft, sort of almost like a pastel mark, right? And this is, this is dirt that I ground up uh, in a mortar and pestle to, so it's got a pretty nice fine grain to it. Um, but if I put a little bit of honey down here and then put my dirt in it, I'm going to get a much darker kind of variation of that. So I might not need as much of a fixative. Um, either case, I could use a store-bought fixative that's designed for it, or um, one of the little tricks of the trade that 
um, you're taught in college when you're doing artwork is a cheap alternative is hairspray. Uh, so this is, this is one that I picked up in the travel section. Uh, and I take it when I travel in my thing so that I always have fixative if I'm working with charcoal or the such. Okay. Thank okay. you. Sure. Thank you. Of course. You can also seal it with a, a, a gloss medium, acrylic gloss medium. But if it's delicate like this and you don't want to disturb it, that wouldn't work. But if it was something like um, this mixed with collage after it dries, you, you would be okay. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? No? All right. Well, what we will do is we will extend our playtime. So you've kind of gotten the, the working with household things uh, out of your system, the nerves, shaking off the nerves, hopefully. Um, and so I'm going to use a bigger piece of paper than I have been because these have all just been little tests because I really want to have fun with it and um, go bigger. So I'm just gonna use this piece of watercolor paper and I will put it down here. And what we'll do is for say 20 minutes. Uh, so you can think about, you can do something abstract. If you wanna do something abstract, you can do something um, that is more representational. So. If you wanted to do something that's a landscape, if you have a picture on your phone that you want to translate, then you can uh, give that a whirl because, you know, you might stumble upon something just fantastic and um, make, make something great with these, these materials, okay? So I'm going to set the uh, timer for 20 minutes. And again, if you all have any questions, and you can unmute yourselves like we discussed before. Um, if you, uh, I like to hear people. And so as long as you don't have anything uh, private going on, like, uh, you know, that, then uh, I tend to, when I run my classes, leave everybody unmuted. Um, but it is up to you if you want to be unmuted. But I am going to start our creative timer now. Okay. And what I would recommend is if you had like a supply that you just really enjoyed uh, using since you did your little exploration, uh, that to go ahead and incorporate your favorite into this, figure out a way to incorporate your favorite. I might, I think I'm going to see what happens with the smoke. <laughs> So if you all weren't here when I was doing my demos before, um, this is just drawing with smoke, um, which you probably won't be able to see on the thing until I'm done. But I just want to see what I can do with it. And as I mentioned before, you just want to be careful of your wax droplets if, you're, if you decide to do something like this. And there are some people who uh, are so skilled with this smoke that... Um, that they can do really refined uh, drawings with it. I'm not that skilled with it. Thank <laughs> you. 
Good thing I don't have a smoke alarm in here. Not anything nearby. I will say I will definitely play with fire more often. <laughs> <laughs> that is fun. Wonder if I can do it. Like, I hope I don't set it on fire. I'm gonna see if I can do it with my flamethrower. <laughs> oh, <God. Wow. laughs> see, no fiddle. Is it working? I'm not really sure. It's it does it, but in a different way. Yeah, because you don't have the same, you don't have that, the wick material, I think. Yeah, that you don't have the smoke burning. rising. Yeah, so it, yeah. basically what it does is it'll make a flatter, like just char the surface, mm -hmm. you know, but um, but I really like that how this sort of flutters Thank about. So you really have to put the paper over the top of the candle. Yeah, yeah, it has to be, and it has to be almost at, a, I'm going to say, like a 45 degree angle. Yeah. To it, to get it to really float over that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. Here's something to um, because it's because it's smoke, right? Do you see the this mark here? 
Yeah, you could just rub it off. Yeah, it's, I'm just using like this makeup applicator yeah. to draw with it. Mm -hmm.
Everybody doing okay? Yeah. <laughs> it to me that that um, as a corridor conversation, uh, I guess people can watch what you're doing on online, but there's a silent, it's basically a silent session while we're drawing, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But people are free to chat. I, I, I encourage uh, interaction, you know? Yeah, it's like I can't chew gum and walk a straight line at the same time. <laughs> All right. So I really like the smoke. Yeah, me too. And I, because I messed up my big paper, I went to a smaller paper. So I, um, I now you're going to have to uh, playing with layers. Here. Yeah, get more. You'll get more candles. Be like, go to the dollar store and buy out all their candles. <laughs> Yeah, well, I had started working with a um, with a flower that was dried. I thought it would give me some pigment, but it uh -huh. didn't. And then that left me a bunch of pieces of red. I mean, it would have been great. It'll be great as a collage, but I I suppose I could put some some glue on my other this little tiny thing and put some of that in the middle of it. Mm hmm. You know? I don't know where my glue is. I'm just hitting mine with all sorts of stuff. See what we'll see what happens. I wish I had some of your blackberries. I'd use it on the bottom half of my thing. You want some of it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are we at 20 minutes? We're almost at 20 minutes. We've got three more minutes. Make those final marks count.
I'm going to get a nail polish high. <laughs> we have about one more minute. All right, there it is. There are your 20 minutes. <laughs> How did, uh, let's see, I'm going to remove the spotlight from me. How did it go for everyone? It was fun. Yeah? What, what material did you use? Bonnie, were you going to say something? No, I'll wait. Thank you. No? I can wait. No, you should go. Okay. Um, my apologies for coming so late. I just couldn't get here sooner. I used um, candle wax. I used creme de framboise, which is a raspberry liqueur. Oh, uh, wow. blueberries. And I used a, a stem of clover and some glue stick. Oh, can we see what you did? Yeah, I'll show, I'll show you. Um, it's more like a collage, I think. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that's pretty. Well, let's see. Here we go. Uh -huh. uh, it's flowers. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, now the grapes are, I mean, the blueberries are dripping. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's lovely. But, wow. Anyway, it was, you know, I came in on the end. So, oh, and I had a. A, a stick of a wood stick of an incense burner, and I used that. For the oh, time. nice! Oh, good! Oh, incense! I like it. I like it. I might have to try that myself. I have a whole bunch of incense tucked away over here. Oh, I'll bet. Yeah, it makes good charcoal. Uh huh. Um, anyone else want to show us what they've done? Anyone? Jean? Jean or Jean? <laughs> no. uh, Lisa? Yeah, I would. Well, Jean, were you going to do it? I'll do it after you, Lisa. No, no, you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, when I checked the list, so I made uh, blueberry muffins yesterday, so I had some blueberries. So I have blueberries, grapes, a lemon, a paprika, and tarragon. All nice. Sweet. Oh, splatter like in it. there, and it is what it is. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Do you know? I like I it almost, horizontal. Yeah. yeah. I almost so wore really uh, earrings today that are basically slices of lemon encased in resin. Okay. And yeah, and there you could you could totally put a layer of resin over that. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. Okay. Thank very you. Excellent. All right, let's see. Uh, anyone else? Carter or Jean? No? <laughs> Jean's not feeling it. She's no. No, Jean didn't, no? didn't come prepared to do that. I work on oh. homework okay. from, from my okay. drawing class. Ah, uh, okay. My colored pencil class. <laughs> what about Carter? No, you're yes. Oh, wait, you're muted. We can't. <laughs> No, I'm just sort of 
sketching and messing. I'm not very artistically <laughs> enabled. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the beauty of these supplies. Like you, like it's like, oh well, you know. Like I, I think if I end up making something great, if not, then I'm like, well, I had fun. Like it was like, like yeah. you know, it's like yeah. it doesn't. Right. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so well, let's see what you did, Carter. I've never seen you embarrassed before. <laughs> He's like, okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> or shy. He's not shy. shy. Because if not, I'm going to show mine again. And, I'll get, <laughs> yeah. and I violated, again, the rules. Because excellent, I got, excellent. I don't want to spotlight you. I messed up my first one because I was trying to use these flowers, which I think I told you, these here flowers, but mm -hmm. they don't really produce a pigment. So instead I used the candle and my lighter excellent and my lipstick and my mascara and um a sharpie pen a calligraphy pen and i did finally use some glue and the flowers and i came up with this oh okay. Okay. oh wow. that's pretty it's beautiful. fabulous so this is all the this is the this is the candle smoke, and this here is the other smoke. Oops. And uh, you can see the lipstick. I also used coffee and honey and whatever to try to get some slight other pigment into uh -huh. it. Oh, I think, I think, I love, I love it with the flowers glued on. Yeah, I thought the flowers are nice. No, yeah, the colors. But, but it's pretty tiny, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. There's a whole, uh, it'll go in someone's tiny house because the tiny house movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. All right. Uh, did anybody else want to show what they've done? Jane, do you want to show your drawing homework? <laughs> <laughs> Watercolor. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Right. Okay. Oh, okay. Nice. So it's more like a uh, that you could do that. So are you doing your homework while we're in this yeah. session? <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> All right, and I, I, out of fairness, I'll show you uh, the one that I did. So um, let's see, spotlight. So this is the smoke. Let's see, smoke. And then wiped away with my little applicator. And then... There's some old English under there and some uh, charcoal with honey. And then this is nail polish. And then I don't know if you can see it. There's glitter nail polish. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ra Raquel, uh -huh. so I was watching you do it. And the more you did it, to me, it looks like an angel with a, a black wing. Maybe they're folded together running forward to the blue sky. I don't know. Maybe she's going to fly or he's going to fly away. But uh, it was lovely. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing is like this. What's fun about this process is that like you don't know, like like it, it just I just started making marks. Right. And then I was like, well, that looks sort of like part of a figure. Well, let's just see what goes. And then I was like, oh, she needs some wings. And so, yeah. you know, and so it's just one of those things where you can just explore and have fun with it. And oh um, <laughs> yeah, wonderful. I'm glad you could see her. Like, and I thought she needed the sparkles. Like right. I, I couldn't get out of here without putting the sparkles on her. Right. <laughs> All right, great. Well, does anybody have any um, like questions? <laughs> any uh, before we? Because uh, I think we, we this, can. <coughs> excuse me. Is That's this fine. the kind of? I mean, do you teach a class like this, or how? What kind of classes do you teach? Well, I normally teach. Um, well, I teach just about anything, really. So I teach. Uh, acrylic painting, uh, oil painting, watercolor painting. I've done pastel workshops, lino cut workshops. Um, drawing. Yeah, drawing. Like uh, the drawing. Um, let's see what else. The plein air. Yeah, plein air painting. I've taught plein air painting classes. And so, and so for me, like the, this really suits me. Um, 
in the sense of the the exploration. Uh, and so it might be something that down the road would become a class uh, of some sort, because I do think it's really nice to, um, I'll say that uh, as adults, sometimes people get um, self-conscious about making art. Yeah. And, um, and it's something that I see all the time. Like I, I, I tell people only like half jokingly that I want to be the um, Bob Ross of this generation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and cause really what it is, is that I want um, whoever told somebody when they were six or seven, that being creative was not their strong suit. I want them, I want to remove that barrier for them. Yeah. And so, and I will say that most of my classes um, spend a lot of time, uh, like I'll tell people, like, I'll lend you my confidence until you have your own. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and, and so a lot of it is saying, hey, you know what, you can do this. And I, I am a firm believer that everyone is creative. Um, and it's just somewhere someone has told them, be embarrassed by what you do. And, and so I just have to sort of, find out where that that point is and and say no it's all right there's 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 more room out here for creatives come on out show your stuff yeah <laughs> okay tell me tell me more i mean we're at i guess we're nearly at 3 30 and you may have other things to do but tell me more about what you say in your bio about um the passage of time and uh, the changing of memories and nostalgia. I mean, that's what you say you focus on. And yeah. Tell me something about that. So for me, like, so I have a lifelong, um, which is why I'm trying to organize my studio. So I, I have lots of antiques and vintage objects mm -hmm. um, that to me, they tell stories. So, so when I find um, like all of my furniture is old furniture. Like I, I have started introducing some like Ikea furniture just for their really nice storage solutions. Mm -hmm. um, and that's only in the studio. It's not in my house, but I like to see where, um, you know, somebody has gotten up from that chair, you know, hundreds and hundreds of times and, mm -hmm. and worn away that finish there. Like to, to me, that speaks to me. And mm -hmm. so when I go to do, an assemblage, I take some sort of story that I'm trying to tell <clears throat> and I want to take seemingly disparate items and bring them home and into um, a new cohesive <laughs> presentation. And, and so um, like I've done self portraits using assemblage um, I also find it very interesting with uh, memory. So I did a whole series. Uh, it's sort of ongoing. There are probably around 80 of them now, but they're, uh, I call them landscapes of memory. Uh -huh. uh, and it's all watercolor and it's all without photo reference. And, and so I, I try to sort of exercise my brain in the sense of like really looking and being present in the moment and then coming back and, and that sort of ethereal foggy thing that you get uh, when you try to recall some details. Um, I just find, I just find it fascinating. Uh, like there's a story uh, in my head when I was a child, my dad took me to this very high hill and to teach me to ride a bike and then set me loose. Like, <laughs> like, it, like he promised not to let go, but then he let go. And in my head, it was this kind of angle of a hill, right? Probably within the last two years, I was driving over near where I, I was at the time uh, as a child. And, uh, and I was like, I'm gonna go see that hill. Like, I'm just gonna go see that hill. And I sat in this parking lot laughing because it was like this. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, but in my head, you know, that memory was very strong that I had been let go, uh, you know, at the tip of Mount Everest and be like, you're on your own, kid. 
<laughs> did you did you did you learn how to ride a bike and do you continue? Oh yeah, to yeah. Ride I learned bike? how to ride a bike, and then I, you know, and then I told my parents that I'd gone and and visited the hill. And my mom's like, "So are you going to stop telling the story?" I was like, "Absolutely not. It's still going to be that you took me to the top of the hill." <laughs> Do you have an example of the assemblage that you um, talked about? Um, do I have anything in, I don't think I have anything readily. Well, hmm. let me see if I can get to it. Give me, give me one moment. I will show you. Okay. I have one in, in real life that mm -hmm. if I can get it off of the wall here. If you hear anything fall over, just take them out. <laughs> oh no. You're still with us there, right? All right. This is a um a real life one. <laughs> Okay. So can you can you see yeah, that? Can you put it on the desktop because we're getting a. Uh, a, a oh yes! Yes! Oh, yeah. Yes! 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 I can. Good idea. Very good idea. Let me move this stuff a little bit. We're getting a reflection. Oh, nice! Yeah. That. Wow. Okay, and there's a little bit of a reflection happening there that I don't yeah. think I can get rid of. But um, yeah, so this was. <laughs> Right after I left the law firm uh, as a law firm manager, and so I call this the puppet master. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> this is the powers that be, and these are all of the little pawns that are being uh -huh. danced about. <laughs> it's cool. It's very cool. It yeah. is. It is. I sort of looked at it, you know, this is probably a, a window into my, uh, one of my job leavings. I looked at it and thought it was free fall. You know? Oh, uh huh. Uh huh. That says more. I mean, it's more a story about me than it was about about you. Yeah. Well, and I will tell you, I do tend to um, like if I do a portrait. I did a whole series of portraits and assemblage of family members. Uh huh. Um, and I didn't name them like oh mom dad this that the other because I feel like that um, really. Uh, eliminates the experience for the viewer. And so I want people to interpret it however they want to interpret it. So I want you to interpret it as falling because it's more personal to you. Right. Do you know? And so when I uh, name, like there's one that I did of my, my mother uh, and it, it's titled something along the lines of, um, it is never about the secret itself, but the keeping of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so because I want people, the, the titles become as much a part of the story mm -hmm. as the assemblage itself. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, for me, for me, I, I took English all through college because I wanted to be able to write well because they say things about artists. And so I was like very early on, I'm like, I'm gonna take English on. And I have a love of words. And so it's a great way for me to incorporate that into my pieces. That's great. That's okay. great. Well, we're probably at the end of our time. What do you think, Carter? 333. Yeah. We're 33. still with folks and people are still out there creating, Jean's still doing her homework. And no. <laughs> is creating, I'm is creating something new. Oh, I did that too, right? I want to thank everybody for coming uh, and uh, say that we're, we, we have upcoming programs. We will be putting this session on our website probably pretty soon and um, on our YouTube channel and you'll be able to see it and other people will be able to see it. I want to just give you dates for our next meetings, which are June 25th, I think July 30th. August 27th and September 24th. And right now we don't have topics. So we are, a couple of us are gonna meet after this, this session to talk about topics and um, we'll be announcing them soon. So uh, anything else for the good of the cause here? 
I just want to say thank you for having me. Uh, it's been a delight. So <laughs> thank you, thank you. You're the delight. Yeah. Oh, really thanks. <laughs> thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. It's been a genuine pleasure. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.